Hello everyone and welcome to Chef D's Supercharged Masterclass. Together with Bill TV and our sponsor RK Health Solutions, you can now see me live in action cooking and sharing all my delicious recipes that you enjoyed at the restaurant and at all the events in the past 25 years. On today's menu, we have a very famous dish of mine, a soya tikka masala, an aloo gobi, tarka dal, naan, jeera rice with quinoa, carrot halwa, salad, and aloo tikki. All the foods will be supercharged with superfoods. Each ingredient I will go through in detail later but we're talking about things like chia seeds, flax seeds, baobabs. So we will go through everything in detail. So let's start cooking. We start today with soya tikka masala. What I've got here is a bowl full of soya chunks that is readily available in all high street supermarkets and Asian supermarkets. It comes in a dry form. I've soaked it for the past two hours in hot water and what I will be doing now it's beautifully soaked and rehydrated what I'll be doing now is squeezing the water out of it and getting it ready for our curry in the meantime we're going to make a start on the base so we start with our pan now this is a, a salad master pan it will help me cook without oil and reduce on my water that, that's needed when, when you cook. The best part of these pans also are the fact that I don't need high heat as well. What I have here is a food processor that's not electric, can be used with your hand. I'll show what I've done. I've already grated the onions in here. We have a little hopper here which I'm going to just put it in there. Now these onions I'm going to put straight into my base of the curry. We're just going to wait till the pan heats. Once the pan has nicely heated up, all we have to do is add these onions. What I'm going to do before we start is just put a little bit of coconut oil to season the pan. As soon as I feel the heat, yeah, the heat is coming through, I'm going to make, put down our dry masalas. Now the dry masalas I'm using today, a teaspoon of jeera, we're going to wait till that browns over. Two bay leaves, a little red Kashmiri chili, cinnamon stick, and a cardamom pod. Just going to let that heat through. As you can see, it's starting to warm through, so just bear with me. The aromas started to come through. We don't want to burn anything, so we're just going to nicely make sure that it's nicely browned over. This is a beautifully designed wok. We can deep fry in here, we can shallow fry in here and we can make beautiful stir fries as well. The smells are coming through beautifully and it's browning nicely. So I'm going to leave it in one place now for a bit so you can see. Very soon you'll be able to see the colours as well that I can smell the, the aromas. What we have here is garlic green chilies and ginger. I don't like to use pastes only because when using a paste you really don't know how much you're putting of each. When I cook I like to have each dish tasting different. How do I accomplish that? In some dishes you need more garlic, in some dishes you need more ginger, in some dishes you need less green chilies. Now if you were to create a paste it's easy but you end up having the same flavours throughout all your meals. 
So these are kind of the tricks in the trade of the trade that I've had over the years. And I've noticed how everybody appreciates the different flavors going into each different dish rather than everything tasting the same. So that's starting to brown nicely. Now we're going to add in our garlic. Now these green chilies, all is, I mean I can say to you put one teaspoon or one tablespoon of green chilies. Now green chilies come in different forms. You, ca you might have a paste of the very small green chilies which are so spicy so therefore please make sure you know what kind of chilies you've got and therefore add it accordingly to your taste. Now as this is a Punjabi dish we are adding a little bit more ginger. Why? Because it enhances the flavours and that is the base of the dish. A very nice gingery texture and flavour. So we're cooking that through. We don't want it to be raw. So we're just cooking that slightly through before adding the onions. And again, as you can see, I've added no oil to this other than what we used for seasoning. Now on top of that, I'm going to leave that at the base, I'm not going to mix it now. On top of that, we're going to add in the onions that we've just grated. Why am I using grated onions? It just makes life a little bit easier. I can make my puree quicker and it will cook down quicker. Now on top of my onions, as you can see, I'm layering it right now. We've got the masala at the bottom. We've got the onions at the top. I'm not going to mix it at the moment. We're going to add one spoon one teaspoon of Himalayan pink salt, I would say one and a half teaspoons. We're adding a cupful of chopped coriander, this is the stem and the green leaves on top of that. And we're going to add the turmeric, the haldi as well. I personally don't like my onions being cooked throughout without any haldi. I love my onions to have a lovely colour. It helps with the aroma and it helps with the colour. I'm going to lid it for, a, for about two minutes. So this system will create its own vapours and its own steam. So at this point we're just going to leave it here. I'm going to re reduce the heat to number two and just let that cook through. In the meantime, I showed you about the soya chunks. We, this is how we need to take the water out of it. Just give it a little light squeeze and put it to the side. Why do we take the water back out? Because now we want the soya to go into our curry and absorb all the flavours and all the masalas and everything. If we don't take the water out, even after the end of cooking, you will have that watery texture inside. I always get people saying, oh, how, can, how is your soya tikka tasting different to mine? And this is why. You've got to, the same way we do things with tofu. When you take the water out of tofu and then you put it into your curry or your sauce or your stir fry and then it absorbs all the nutri nutrients and all the flavours. So while that is cooking, I'm getting this done. Multitasking is the key to any kitchen. So besides all the water I drained out, We've also got that much that I've just taken out by squeezing again. Right, let's get back to this and have a quick look at that. It's sizzling away nicely. I'm going to give it a little stir now. As you can see, it, the onions have its own waters. We have no problem with any moisture in here. So this is going to cook nicely. We have one more ingredient to put in here, which I haven't added at the moment. I'll be adding it a little bit later on, once the heat is nice and intense in there. Right, we're going to lid that up. While that is cooking, we are going to get our ingredients ready for our aloo gobi. We have here a cauliflower floret, nicely washed. We have some broccoli, we have the greens of the cauliflower, we have uh, baby potatoes. As you can see, I've not taken the skin off. 
everything is nice and washed. I've left the skin is very important. A lot, a lot of the nutrients is just below the skin of any vegetable. And the more we peel vegetables, the more we're losing out all these nutrients. So th that's lovely washed and cut into four cubes. Baby potatoes, so if they're smaller, you can cut them in two halves. Here we have some greens that I've cut already. I'll finish the rest off. These are the greens that are surrounding your cauliflower. A lot of people just throw them away. Don't throw them away. Highly nutritional and adds to your greens. We'll be getting the cauliflower florets ready in the correct size that we want. Now for aloo gobi, we don't want very small. They've got to be not too big and not too small that is going to break up into the actual curry. So we're just going to, if we've got a floret this size, we're just going to cut it into long strips like that. In the traditional aloo gobi, you will only have aloo and gobi and some people add a little bit of carrots. Today I'm adding in some broccoli flor florets. These florets will be added last into the curry. We want to hold all its nutrients and we want to hold its shape as well. We don't want them to fall apart in the actual curry. So they will be used. We'll have a beautiful, colourful aloo gobi today. Key to nutrients as well is colourful food. Try your best to add as much colour into your food. Red peppers, green peppers, carrots, red cabbage, courgettes. The more colour you invite into your meals, the more nutrition you're inviting. So this way, is, it's important. It doesn't only look good to our eyes, it's, it's extremely, extremely healthy. We shall go back to this and have a quick peek. As you can see, it's simmering away. At this point, I'm going to make a little well at the bottom. So the moisture comes to the bottom. Moisture from all the onions. And I'm going to add, what I've got here is three tablespoons of cashews and two tablespoons of sunflower seeds. Now normally in Mughlai dishes, Punjabi dishes, we add cashews in there to add um, a nice creamy texture. It's a beautiful flavors. I've also added sunflower seeds. Now these sunflower seeds, obviously they add all the nutrients ag again. It still gives you that beautiful creaminess and it just adds to the nut nutritional value. Now if you've got a nut allergy, you can have complete, you can make this with completely sunflower seeds. So it's been soaking for an hour. I'm just going to take the water out. And why do I soak it? I soak it because you, you'll, when we grind this together and make the curry base, this will be beautiful and smooth. You won't have a grainy, nutty flavour in your mouth at all. So we're going to put all of that in. Just leave it at the bottom. We want it to cook into the masalas and all the moisture. Just leaving that to cook by itself. Again, we lid it. For this dish, we also need chopped tomatoes. Now, if you want to, you can use passata. You can use your own um, homemade tomato puree or something. I like to use fresh tomatoes. Now, some people say you can't get the colour of your curry with the fresh tomatoes. I know we're not in India and we're not in a hot country where we've got gorgeous, delicious red tomatoes. But the dish will be very colourful. We've used red onions. It will hold a beautiful colour. If you feel at any point you want a nice, deep, thick red curry, you can always use a piece of beetroot in there. Now, that is something we, I'm going to show you how to do. So we're going to take a little bit of beetroot. This is fresh, fresh beetroot, which we'll be using in another dish as well today. Now, unfortunately, we can't use the beetroot skin because that is not edible. So we'll be sli slicing off the skin. Please use a peeler. Just chop it into little cubes. Pop that into that middle and let that cook through as well. So when we grind all this together to make our curry, the colour will be amazing. While we're waiting for this, we've got our aloo gobi ingredients ready. 
There's one more part of the aloo gobi we want to get ready as well. Thick carrot, because we don't want... There we go. I'm just holding it here. It's a beautiful machine where I'm not going to cut myself. But it's going to give you nice carrot slices with a beautiful little ridge to it as well. Now, as you can hear here, the pan is making a noise. We've got this system here where the lip tells me that the temperature inside is extremely hot and everything is cooking beautifully. Now, if I want to carry on cooking, all I do is reduce the temperature slightly and let it carry on inside. So it's telling me that the temperature is fantastic but still nothing's burning as you see we've got nothing sticking to the bottom and we've got everything cooking together. We're just going to give this a little mix and as you can see that nothing is sticking inside so we've just eliminated the need for about half a cup of oil or ghee or butter or whatever you would have used. So as you can imagine, the amount of calories we're going to save in this cooking way, the way we're going to cook. We're putting in disc number one, which is the little grater disc. And we're getting ready our carrots for our carrot halva. Today's carrot halva I'm having a little bit of a twist to it and we're going to add coconut. So it's going to be carrot halva with desiccated coconut. As you can see my pan is telling me that it's extremely hot in there. Coming back to this, cooking beautifully, we're in almost there now. I am happy to add the tomatoes, chopped tomatoes, which I'm going to leave on the top of this. All the measurements are in, going to be in the description below. How many tomatoes we've used and how many onions we've used. In the meantime, we're going to put another pan here to make a start on the aloo gobi. I've put the pan on for the aloo gobi, just making a just wait until it heats up. So we'll leave that to heat up. In the meantime, we'll have another look at this. It's bubbling away beautifully. I'm still not going to mix it just yet. I'm still going to leave it in its layers. Right. This is this is heated. It started to heat up, like we did earlier. We're just going to season the pan with absolutely tiny bit of coconut oil. put that back again. Now in this we're going to start off with our masalas. We've got ginger, about a good, I would say a good tablespoon and a half. Very small amount of garlic, about a teaspoon. This is not um, a recipe that has a lot of garlicky flavours. Green chilies, again only use as per your taste. Just going to mix that through. The pan's heating up now, as you can see, the masalas are cooking away. Just going to cover it for about 30 seconds. I've just increased the heat on this for a bit. So I really want the bottom to start evaporating and getting all the juices of the tomatoes together. So let's give it another 30 seconds. Right, my masala is cooking through nicely. Right, first and foremost, we're going to add the potatoes. They're the vegetables that are the most dense, so everything's going to need different cooking stages. So we're putting the potatoes in first. We're going to add a little bit of salt to help along the steaming process. I'm going to lid it and it's going to do its thing in there. Right, so this is coming together lovely. So we're going to give it a nice mix. 
As you can hear, it's sizzling through beautifully. Going back to our aloo gobi, if we have a quick look at the potatoes, they've started to warm through now. I'm going to add some turmeric to this. Haldi. Going to add a little bit of cumin powder. Whole cumin. Just going to let that cook through. I'm not going to touch it, just let it cook as it is. Now while we're waiting on that, we've got the carrots ready for the halwa and all our veggies are ready. We have one more item to do preps for and that's our aloo tiki. Now today I've already got uh, my potatoes mashed. I've just used two large potatoes, steamed them, peeled and mashed them. So they are pretty much ready for us. So we're going to add the masala to this. We've got green chilies, ginger, I'm not adding garlic to this. This does not require. It's not a garlicky flavour. One teaspoon, one full teaspoon of Himalayan pink salt. We're going to add turmeric, ground jeera, ground dhania powder, half a spoon of garam masala. We have amchur powder about a teaspoon of amchur powder. What amchur powder does, it elevates your dish with natural flavours of um, sour and sweet without using any sugars. We have ground soft, ground fennel seeds. Again, fennel seeds are used in a lot of cooking methods. Why? Because it takes it's not only got nutritional value, but it takes your dish and the flavors. You have like so many different explosions of flavors happening. Just give that a little mix through. Going to add a little bit of chopped coriander, which will. Just finely chopped fresh coriander. Just going to let that sit for a bit so all the flavors combine together. I'm not going to start making it into the tikkis yet. I've got a couple of flowers to add to it. But I just want the potatoes to take on some of the masala and the flavors. We'll put that to one side. The flowers, actually, I'm going to just put the flowers in. The flowers that we're going to add to this a teaspoon of chickpea flour a teaspoon of cornstarch and at the end of it when we're ready to when we're ready to roll we'll be adding some panko breadcrumbs that will create a beautiful crispy coating so just going to leave that to one side i just want the masalas to nicely infuse into the potatoes we'll have a quick look at our potatoes being cooked here if at any point you feel you want to add water to your dish, you can, no problem. The less you add, the better for your health. Why? Because we want the natural waters of each vegetable to cook in itself with those waters. So always remember, the more water you add to your dish, the more salt you'll need to add. You lose its own nutrient values. But at any point, if you feel you want to add a little bit, I'm going to add about, I'd say, a tablespoon right in the center. There we go. What we have here is the same quantity of rice, basmati rice, and we have the same quantity of quinoa. We've got golden quinoa, and it's been soaked for about two hours. I don't know whether anybody knows, but to, after you soak your quinoa, give it a, a rub like this. It takes away a natural sap that the quinoa has 
which we all forget to do, but it can be harmful to our bodies. So when we take this off, just basically your water will get a little bit soapy and that's all you need to do. Take that water out. I'm going to add the quinoa into the soaked rice and that will be cooked a little bit later on. Just going to have a quick look at our potatoes and they're cooking fine. As you can see, you, we've got some sticking happening at the bottom, don't worry about it. When the rest of the veg starts coming in and its water start working, all that will come loose and just add some more flavours to your dish. So don't worry at all, I'm just waiting for the potatoes to soften up ever so slightly. In the meantime, we're going to get ready our nan flour. So we've got our... So what I'm taking, we're going to make nans from whole wheat flour. We're not going to use plain flour, we're using whole wheat chapati flour. So we're looking at about two cups of whole wheat flour. Starting off with two cups of whole wheat flour. The same ones you use for your rotis at home. Please don't use plain flour. I try my best to stay away from plain flour as much as I possibly can. In our everyday cuisine, if we can stay away from plain flour, it is the best decision. I'm going to add a teaspoon of Himalayan pink salt into our nans, half a teaspoon of coconut oil. I'm taking a little bunch of fenugreek leaves now, I like my nans to be extremely flavoursome. If you have anything, if you have some methi leaves frozen in the house, because our potatoes are nearly done. So we're just chopping them methi ever so nicely and finely. We're going to add this to our atta. Alongside a juine, a pinch of a juine, whole jeera about a quarter teaspoon of ground jeera. That's our flavours done. Now in here we're going to add some yoghurt. This atta is made without any yeast. So we're just adding some yoghurt. So it's basically instant naan that you could make at home. Looking at about half a cup of yoghurt. In here I'm going to add some warm water and go ahead and bind it. This dough is not a firm dough, it's a nice soft loose dough because we don't, we're not going to give it any time to rise. We need it soft from the beginning. Just bring everything together. If you have a pr food processor you can make it in your food processor perfectly fine. You can make it by hand. Right, so I'll put that all together. We're just going to leave it covered for about 15 minutes before I bind it again together with a little bit more olive oil. Right, we're just going to give that a little lid, put that to the side, we'll be with it in about 15 minutes. In the meantime, if we go back to our potatoes, they're steaming away beautifully. I'm, as you can see, I'm letting the waters go back in there. They are softening up beautifully and they're sticking at the bottom as well. That's still perfectly fine, not to worry. We're going to add this next dense vegetable is our carrots, then the cauliflower. Just layer it in. At this point, I'm going to add a teaspoon more of our Himalayan pink salt because currently all the flavours are at the bottom. So we just need a little bit of salt on there. On top of that, we're going to layer our broccoli and then the greens. Leave it alone for another couple of minutes before we give it a good mix. In the meantime, we'll get the onions ready for the aloo gobi. Just normal half, half moon onions. You can cut it in your food processor, you can cut it by hand, but these onions will go in the end. We don't need to cook these too much. In the meantime, we're going to 
finish off our masala base for um, our soya tikka masala. I've switched this off easily about 15 minutes ago now. It's cooling down. What I'm going to do now is just hand blender. We don't recommend putting hand blenders into our pots directly. Right, this is our puree that we've just created from all the masala that we've got. We've just created a lovely puree and we've put it into our blender. Now at this point, if, at, if you taste it and at any point you feel as if, okay, you need to add more spices, you feel as if maybe the spices have reduced because you've got to bear in mind now you're going to add the soya tikkas. So at any point, if you feel you want to add more spices, you do it at this point. You switch, you put your cooker back on, let that heat up and you cook your green chilies and you cook your ginger. Don't put them on top raw, it will change all the flavours. I'm happy with the flavour so I'm going to carry on. That goes right back in again. Now to this we're going to add our soya tikkas. What will be coming next is coconut cream. Coconut cream is going to replace your dairy cream. It's going to replace, you can put yogurt in it, but yogurt will bring out um, a sourness. So it all depends on your flavors, but these, this, these are my flavors. So we're carrying on with this, gonna let this cook through. If at any point you want to add water, definitely add it. It depends on how you want this curry to, do you want it a lot more saucier? But so far, I'm happy with this. So we're going to lid that back up, let that carry on doing its thing. And have a quick look at our aloo gobi. It's been cooking away, simmering away, all by itself. Now, we shall stir it with a spatula. So we bring in the potatoes back up. Now the masalas that we put originally at the bottom, we're bringing them back to the top, mixing it in with the rest of our vegetables. It's perfectly fine. I'm happy with that. I'm going to leave that to cook by itself. In the meantime, I'm going to bring back the atta with a spoon of coconut oil in my hand. Just going to wrap it around and massage the dough nicely and finish it off so it's completely ready for when we want to make our nans. It's a lovely soft dough, as you can see, really nice and soft, not hard at all. So when we start cooking with it, when we start rolling it out, it'll be very nicely, it'll help us roll it out properly. There we go, that's about it. You don't need to work on it too much, it's perfectly fine. We're going to put it away again, lid it until we're ready to roll. Coming back to our tiki, we just have a quick look at how far it's going. It's cooking nicely from the bottom as well. The heat's getting through. I'm happy with that, let that cook through. We're just going to reduce it now to number two. So that's cooking away. My five minutes on my cooker here is done. I'm going to add just a teaspoon of coconut oil. Rub it around. Note I'm not using ghee, I'm not using butter. We're going to add all that carrots that we've just grated. Leave it in the base and we're going to lid it. So put that to side, let that cook on its own. So we're going back to our aloo gobi. We're going to check on that. Always try to put your vapors back into your curry. At this point, I'm going to add a little bit of garam masala, a little bit of kasuri methi. and I would like mine a little bit more turmeric. So I'm just gonna let it cook for a bit and I'll taste the salts a little bit later on. 
In the meantime, as soon as, as soon as this will be cooked, I'm going to put on our dal. In the meantime, we'll go back to our alutikis. In the meantime, we're just going to finish off mixing up our tikki mixture. Just some mashed potatoes, three, uh, two flowers, a little bit of chickpea flour and a little bit of cornstarch. I'm just putting it together. That is perfect. I'm going to add half a cup of chopped onions to this. At any point, if you feel your potatoes have taken on a lot of the flowers and they're going dry, just put it together. If it doesn't bind properly and you think it's just falling apart, then by all means you can add a little bit of uh, water. But so far I think it's fine. I'm just going to mix it through nicely with my hands now so I can get a proper mix. Oh, the flavours are amazing. Simple vegetables seasoned properly, you can create amazing, amazing dishes. So we're going to quickly form about four of these little dickies. So at any point, if you feel it's just not coming together and they're breaking up too much, you can add a little bit of water to your mixture. But a good thing with today is I'm not deep frying my tikkis. They're going to go in a frying pan and they're just going to go nicely golden brown on both sides. Roll up the edges, have a nice little side to it. So I'm just going to do a couple for now. Enough for our thali today. Make sure the edges are nice and secure. You've not got major cracks in them. And we're going to put panko breadcrumbs on last. I'm just going to do three for now. Coming together beautifully. If any of you like um, your aloo gobi with a little bit of tomatoes in, you can add them at this stage. I personally like them a bit dry, so I'm not going to add. Now I've got a large broccoli in there, which I've just cut in two halves. So nothing has mushed up, nothing has just evaporated. Everything is holding its own shape, yet cooking beautifully. That's, I would say, about another minute's cooking left on that now. If we go back to our soya tikka, if you can see that without any oil, we've been able to create a beautiful colour on top. In fact, it looks as if there's oil in there. So if somebody, was, somebody didn't know that we didn't put no oil in it, you would think that that's oil. But it isn't. It's just the natural fat of all the vegetables coming together. And that's all we need, really. We really don't need to add so much that we do on an everyday basis. So again, I'm just going to mix it together. At this stage, I'm going to add in the peppers. These peppers, red peppers, I've just cut them in a sort of a, a triangle shape. I'm just going to pop them on the top. Normally, in my restaurant, these would be sautéed in oil to create a, a shine. Do we really need that shine? Or do we need our health? I think we need our health. So let's just pop it on top, because we're after good flavours, we're after good health. Everything doesn't need to have that shiny coat, because that's just for the eyes. Once it goes past your mouth, you don't even know where all that's just turning into fat. We're going back to our carrot halva. Good 10 minutes, actually. We're coming back to it. As you can see the top, we're getting the condensation happening. With a clean spoon, I'm just going to mix it through. The heat's getting through everywhere now. So at this point, I'm not going to do anything. In the meantime, if I show you what I've got, chickpea dal, mung dal, lentils, red lentils, and white lentils. These are all split. Why we use split and not the whole pulse is because this is a dal. And dal is simply everything that is a split of the whole, otherwise it's a different curry altogether. So we just, I've soaked this for a good four hours now. Everything is nice and you, if you just put it between your nails, you can see that it just breaks beautifully. So that's perfectly right. So we're just waiting on this. But what we're going to do with this one today, is just turn the tables around a bit. Instead of cooking the dal first and then creating a, um, a tempering or tarka afterwards and putting it on top, 
We're going to do the tempering first. Hence why, obviously, we're doing oil-less cooking today. Again, tiny little seasoning at the base of our pan, which is nicely heated up. Mustard seeds, which are going to pop in here. And we've got whole cumin. Once this is heated through, I'll put the rest of the tempering. And the dal is going to go directly in there with the water and it's going to simmer to perfection. If later on, if you feel, oh, I want, my, I want my oils, I want my ghee, but you can add it in at the end. Adding oils like olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, rapeseed oil, if you add um, coconut oil, avocado oil, add it at the end if, you, if that's what you want. They're still good for you, but it's, it's when we heat it up, that's where we're adding all the badness so this is coming together nicely it's warming up really beautifully so we'll start popping in a bit we'll get ready its masalas we just need some green chili and some garlic as you can see the the valve on the alu gobi is telling me that the heat inside is absolute maximum so I'm gonna have a quick peek at that and I'm going to check that everything is cooked. We've probably got about a minute's cooking left. Other than that, everything is really nicely cooked through. Right, we're going to leave that. I'm going to switch that one off and take it to the front. Like I said, I don't need my handles because this isn't piping hot. They've made these handles so beautifully I can move it. So I'm going to put that away now and that's going to carry on cooking because the heat in there is very, very hot. So we'll leave that one alone now. If I show you what's going on in this one, just look at that bubbling away. So as soon as I know my peppers are ready, I'll be adding the coconut cream. Now my jeera and rai have golden beautifully in here. If I can show you, at this point I'm going to add some curry leaves, which is just going to warm through. Just going to let that warm through for a bit with a little bit of steam. So this is heated through perfectly. In here I'm going to add my garlic my chilies and about half a chopped onion just going to lid that to encourage the vapors so the onion will get nice and soft before we add the dal going back to our carrot halva have a quick check on that letting all the vapors go back inside these carrots are nearly cooked so I would say another five minutes before I add the rest of the amazing ingredients right our carrots are cooking away beautifully now we're going to add to this I've got some desiccated coconut which is fresh co made from fresh coconut that I grate up and just freeze for, you, for use like this. To bring it back to life, I put some hot boiling water in there. So this is going into our carrot halva. So it's going to be a carrot and coconut halva. So we're just adding all this goodness into it. I've not put the coconut water. Give it this lovely mix through. The carrots are nearly cooked through. So I'm just going to wait about another five to ten minutes before adding some condensed milk. Yeah, going back to our tarka, we've added the onions and the masala is cooking away. We're going to add our pre-soaked lentils into this. Normally, with, um, to cook a dal with um, a nice soup base, we would have to put at least two to three times its quantity of water. 
But for this one, we only need to add one times. So we've already got half in there. I'm going to add another half of the quantity of water. And that's it. We're going to add a little bit of haldi to this. And let it cook. And we should come back to it in about 10 minutes. That's going to cook away by itself. Just a number two setting on the electric stove. In the meantime, let's have a quick peek at how this is getting along. Why we made this curry first is because it needs the longest to marinate, to put, come together. All the soya chunks need that extra time to um, absorb all the flavours. So this is not a quick dish. This is not something you could put together and say it's going to taste nice. In fact, this is one of those dish dishes that tastes beautiful the day after as well. So we've just given that a nice mix through. I'm going towards my um, coconut cream. I'm this is one full can of coconut cream. I'm going to put half in there at the moment. I've not whisked it. It's perfectly fine. I'm going to give that a, a mix. Again, coconut has its own natural fats and at a low simmer, all that will come through. And in the end, we'll be garnishing it with some fresh coriander. So as you can see, the colours at the moment, it's like a light, light um, orangey pinky colour. Once, all, once it starts cooking again, it will pick up that redness. So we let that cook through. Mm -hmm. Having a look at our halva again, see how it's getting along. Right, to this what I'm going to do is add in some condensed milk. I'm going to put half a can of carnation condensed milk. This obviously has your sugar and your dairy element. You do not need to add any more sugar to this. The carrots itself at this point are absolutely deliciously sweet. I'm adding some elaichi, cardamom powder to this. I'm a, a pinch of saffron about three pinches of cardamom altogether. This, if you can get a shot of this, this is coming together so beautifully that once this is evaporated, all the sugars and the carrots will be coming together and the colors will be lovely. So I'm just gonna leave that all by itself now to finish off cooking. That's perfectly fine for me. We'll have a quick peek at our um, Dal, darka dal, it's st making a start. Again, at this point, if you want to taste the flavours, if there's anything you want to add, if it's masala you need to add, then please do cook your masala, don't add raw masala. It's coming together beautifully. I'm going to put um, a pan on for our rice, our jira rice. So again, we're going to switch this on. Let that heat through. Very tiny splash of coconut oil, jeera rice, so hence we're adding our whole jeera. We're going to wait till this browns through. Our other spices that we'll be adding to the jeera is one stick of cinnamon, one pod of cardamom, which I'm just going to break between my hands, and two cloves, two little pieces of cloves. That's just going to heat through all by itself and meantime I'll get the water out of the rice. If you remember earlier I showed you I added the rice and the quinoa together so that's beautifully soaked through. I'm just going to take the water out. As you can see this particular dish is being cooked all the way through our cooking session today. Everything else is being cooked around it hence again I say that this is the long it takes the longest to cook. So don't, don't rush on that because you will, you will change the flavours. This is coming together fine. The fantastic thing about this cooking system is whatever heat is on the base of the pan is immediately transferred through the sides, through the top. So you don't have any element in this pan where you'll get cold spots or you'll get extra hot spots. So you don't need a heavy bottom pan. If the heat distribution is equal, you shouldn't have no problems. It's an excellent pan to cook in. 
and that's why you can do oil le oil less cooking it's because of the heat distribution that's coming through nicely I can smell it it's heating up beautifully normally it'd be two part water to the quantity of your rice and quinoa today we'll be adding one and a half part water and only adding if it's necessary at the moment one and a half should cook it perfectly my jeera is cooked through nicely I'm going to add in our rice and quinoa going to add the water going to add one teaspoon of Himalayan pink salt that's all we need give that a little mix if you like your jeera rice a yellow color you can add turmeric here I like my natural colored rice unless it's a pulao or a biryani so that's nicely mixed together we put that aside we're going to close this and we're going to leave it alone so we're looking at about 20 minutes to half an hour before this will be fully cooked in the meantime let's have a look at our dal it's starting to heat up I'm just going to increase that heat slightly Okay, we're going to go back to our carrot halva, have a quick look at that because it's sizzling away nicely. The moisture is beautiful in here. Again, I don't want to do anything to it, it's perfectly fine. Let it all come together. So while we're waiting on that, what's left to do now is our salad and our raita. So let's move on to our salad. Number three blade. This is going to be large juliennes. So we're going to do our cucumber in a large julienne. As you can see, these cucumbers are beautiful. I need about half, which I'll cube again. That's enough for my salad. We're going to put our carrots in the same one. Now, I'm going to slice, change that to a slicer for our cabbage. If we try to include cabbage into our daily diet, you will find that you'll be increasing um, natural waters in your system. Um, you'll be increasing your digestive system will be working a lot more better. Cabbage goes through your system very, very easily taking anything that um, has stayed in your system far too long so adding cabbage is, is a really good idea and again I try to add lots of colours I love my red cabbage which I've added to this as well now here I'm going to add some zucchinis zucchinis are just going to be sliced just adds a lovely texture to your salad half a zucchini is enough this in the end I will garnish with coriander and some lemon try to avoid any salt on top if you have to have salt if I mean if that's your palate then please just go for Himalayan pink salt but you will notice that these vegetables retain so much properties and so much flavors you really don't need anything a dash of lemon is beautiful a lot of people like to do a lot of um, olive oil dressings Today we're making a thali, an olive oil dressing will take it to another dimension. So we just want to keep it simple. So we'll leave that on the side for later. For our yogurt raita, I'm using a bio yogurt, about a cup full. We're going to add the cucumber that we've just julienned. I'm just going to cut it a little bit further into smaller cubes. You can grate it on a fine grater as well. It really depends on how you like your raita. I like mine to have a little bit of a cool crunch in it. A lot of people end up um, adding a lot of red chilli powder to their raita. For me, a raita is a coolant on your plate. If there's something that um, 
has increased a lot of heat and a lot of flavors and you want to cool your palate, that is the job of a raita. Now on top of that, if you add red chili powder, you're deceiving the object. So keep it simple. Some things that need to be simple, keep it simple. Because when you have something in a thali, you don't want all the flavors to clash. Some things will have to give you a nice soothing effect as well. So we'll give that a quick mix. Just going to take it over to my spices and I'm going to add a little bit of Himalayan pink salt, ever so small amount. I'm going to add a small quantity of cumin powder. Again, cumin powder is a coolant. It helps cool your body down. So again, if you've had something spicy in your tally and your palate is um, hot and, and, and hurting you, have your uh, yogurt. And that's it. That's our right there done. In the end, I'll garnish it and put it together in our thali. So we'll put that aside. We'll be taking out some of our salad that we can put aside. I'm getting our lemon ready for our salad. A nice wedge ready for later when I want to squeeze it on. If we go back to our rice that's been cooking here, as you can see, within about five minutes, it's, I've put cold water in that, by the way, I didn't put boiling water. So it, within five minutes, it's reached above boiling point and it's already started to cook. Our dal is coming together nicely. What you see on top here is called starch. Now, if you want to, you can ladle that off. You can leave it in. It's really up to you. Some people don't mind. I personally like to take it off. So the next time it does froth up at the top, I will take a little ladle and take it away. It does improve the flavours of your dal and takes away the impurities and takes away the excessive starch in your food as well. So let that cook through. We're going to have a look at um, how our soya tikka is coming along beautifully. I'm going to have a last taste of this, I'm letting me know before I serve up. I'm going to add a little bit of kasuri methi and a little bit of uh, garam masala. How I store my kasuri methi is that I pre-grind it, I don't like the big bits in my food, so therefore it will be added to the end of your dish. What kasuri methi does, it balances all the flavors together. If you've got sweet, natural sweetness from all your onions, that will give you that little bit of a bitter tone. But again, on top of that, we're adding so many nutrients to it. I'm going to cut up um, a little bit of coriander. And this dish is just about ready now. With the aloo gobi, now it's just come to the end. I'm going to add our sliced onions. Give it a little mix. That's just going to come together. We'll cook through in about a minute. And our aloo gobi is ready. In the meantime, our dal is coming together beautifully as well. Our onions have cooked through beautifully and the aloo gobi is ready. I'm just going to put that away now. Let's check on our dal. Dal is cooking beautifully. Let's have a quick look at our rice. So this is quinoa and rice cooked together. It's gone nice and fluffy. There's enough moisture in there to finish it off. Don't need to add anything else to this. Absolutely perfect. Just going to relid it. Reduce the heat. I'm just getting some coriander ready for our soya tikka masala 
for garnish and finishing as that curry is now complete. As you can see, I'm going to lift it up. Now I'm just going to move the rice so we can start heating up our tawa for our naan. While this is heating up, I'm going to check on our carrot halva, which has been cooking away all by itself. Coming together beautiful. it's just about done. So that will be ready for us. Our rice is perfectly cooked and nice and moist as well. And every grain is nice and separated. It's not mushy. I'm going to switch that off. That's completely ready. Just going to have a look at our dal. If we need any water, we can add it at this stage. I would like to add about half a cup of water and I'm just going to increase that a little bit more right now we're going back to our naan just gonna make nice homemade simple naans putting the little balls into dry flour. We'll make about three for now. But the quantity we made would easily give you, I would say about six nans, you can easily do another three out of this. So what we're doing here now, just if you want to shape it with your hands, go ahead and do it. I like a little bit of a rolling pin. So we're gonna first roll it out around just in a nice little round ball shape. You get to about this stage, make sure it's all nice and equal, then you just pull it out from one point. Now this little pull will give you little um, different sizes in the naan, some will be thick, some will be thin, that will give you that um, element of crispiness, softness, Okay, just waiting for the tawa to heat up. In the meantime, we'll have a quick look at our carrot halva. I'm going to switch it off now. I'm just going to season this pan. I'm going to put this naan onto our pan and just let it cook on both sides while we get the next one ready. Again, roll it out in a nice round disc. Once you know it's a, it's a good size, just pull it out to one corner into a lovely little nan shape. You can do little round discs as well. It's, it, it is up to you how you want to eat it. This just creates different dimensions to the actual nan and gives you those crispiness and, and soft elements as well. We're not going to... Um, touch it at the moment. We're just going to leave it and let it cook properly from one side. Have a quick look at our dal. It's just about ready. So we've not needed any kind of pressure cooker here. While everything else is cooking away, this is ready as well. So at this point, our nan is cooking nicely. Just going to increase the heat. I've increased the heat to the highest at the moment. By giving it a little bit of pressure, you'll find that you encourage the air to move from one side to another, helping the inside of um, your bread, your naan, to cook evenly. As you can see, we're not doing this in the tandoor, so we haven't got the extreme heat from every angle. So therefore, we're just giving it a little help along. 
As you can see, it's cooking beautifully on both sides. Our dal is completely cooked. I'm just letting it cook a little bit longer because I want that creaminess to happen. Now, if you're in a rush and you want that to happen fast, you can smash it a little bit and that will encourage that cream texture to happen. But we have time, so I'm going to let it carry on cooking to perfection. Our naan is just about ready. We're just going over with a little bit of coconut oil. Keeping the moisture in. That's just about ready. I'm going to put that to the side. Right, we make a start with our tikkis and finish them off. We want a little bit of a crispy outer. So therefore, I'm just using a little bit of panko bread breadcrumbs. There's no need to dip these tikkis into anything. Just press these breadcrumbs in. I'm just pressing it into the two sides. I've just flipped our nan over and finishing off our tikkis just to give it a nice crispy outer. Right, I'm just going to pop um, these tikkis onto this hot tava with a, a splashing of coconut oil. We're not going to deep fry these dickies. We're just going to crispy them with a little bit of coconut oil on both sides. That way we've, we've retained the crunch, but we don't need to deep fry it. So let's have that um, cooking away. These dickies, I've just flipped them over and they're crisping lovely on both sides. These are done now. I'm just going to put them on the side there. Dal is now completely done, nice and creamy as well. I've just ev evaporated a little bit more water from it. That's how I like it. That's, I'm going to switch this off. My last naan is just about ready as well. Let's finish that off. And we're just about ready for plating. So there it is, our beautiful Punjabi Thali. Hope you've enjoyed watching us. If you've liked what you've seen, definitely don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, share, tell your friends. We're coming back with lots more exciting Thali. In our Thali theme, we've got so much different innovative um, Thalis that you are going to be stunned. I hope you've enjoyed what you've watched and I wish you could taste this. It uh, looks absolutely delicious and we're all going to enjoy it here. Hope you can enjoy it with us too and I hope you'll replicate this at home, send in pictures. If there's anything you want to know, leave a message, leave a comment and we will definitely reply to every single one of you. If you do replicate this, please do send in some of your pictures. Let us know how you got along. If you're stuck, again, we're here to help. Stay safe guys, stay healthy.